Okay, so what I'm going to talk to you next is called ioni, ionization energy. Okay, that's what I want to talk to you so we can make this short form as IE, ionization energy. Okay. Now, let's say we have an atom. Let's say we have sodium atom. Okay, let's say sodium atom is in a gaseous form. The amount of energy we need to put in to remove one electron from the sodium atom or one mole of electron actually that's that's actually more like it now. so if we have uh, one mole of sodium and then we want to remove one mole of electrons so the amount of energy that you need to put in to remove the electron is called ionization energy it's called ie uh, we call this ie one the first ionization energy first first ionization energy okay the first ionization energy is the minimum energy you need to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of a gaseous atom okay but you, you don't need to know the definition but that's what it is now ionization energy this ionization energy is basically measuring measuring how how strongly how strongly the valence electrons are held okay how strongly the valence electrons are held. That, that's it it's, it's a measure of that so if you remember when we go down the group when we go down the group what is happening the uh, as you go down the group if you remember this is increasing nuclear charge is increasing but shielding effect is increasing much more and so the effective nuclear charge effective nuclear charge is actually decreasing on the valence electrons so which means that when we go down the first ionization energy is actually decreasing that means the amount of energy you need to remove electrons uh, from the valence shell is decreasing okay meanwhile when we go across if you go across right what is happening here when you go across i, uh, I told you z is increasing but shielding effect is quite constant right so which means that zeff is actually increasing so when we're going across right the first ionization energy is actually increasing because the valence electrons are being held much more stronger when you go from left to right valence electrons are being held much stronger so the, the moral story here is this from up to down ionize first ionization energy is decreasing and then from left to right the first ionization energy is increasing okay then if we continue to keep removing electrons like if you look over here okay let, let's look at this table here right let's look at this table here okay when you remove the first electron in sodium right you need 495 kilojoules of energy 495 kilojoules of energy the moment you remove the next electron i want you to notice here the energy suddenly shoots up to 4560 let's look at the next one here okay let's look at the next person here okay so let's say we look at uh, magnesium remove the first electron 735 remove the second electron 1455 and then the moment you want to remove the third electron the energy jumps straight to 7000 it increases so much more let's look at something else um let's look at um let's look at this one okay let's look at phosphorus first 1000 second 1008 2009 4009 6002 and suddenly it jumps to 21000 it jumps to 21000 why is this happening all right so let's look at the sodium one first in the case of sodium right it is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1 so sodium has 11 protons right 11 protons so what is happening in the case of sodium is we are removing this electron first in the outermost shell so the amount of energy we need to remove this electron was 495 okay so now we have already removed this electron we removed it already done now what happens is sodium is no longer an atom but sodium now becomes an ion and sodium has 11 protons so it's 11 protons versus 10 electrons now and you also notice the number of shells have decreased okay so this is shell number one n equals to one and this is shell number two so now the number of shells has decreased so when we want to remove the next electron we need to remove the electron from here okay this is where we're going to remove the electron from so this electron this one is removed from 2p6 one of this that is why it needs more energy 
now because we have more protons compared to electrons and we are removing electrons closer to the shell closer to the shell that's why so if we look at um let's say if we look at phosphorus just now right let's look at phosphorus now in the case of phosphorus phosphorus the electron configuration is phosphorus is 15 1 s2 2 s2 2 p6 3 s2 3 p3 this is phosphorus so this is shell number one and equals to one this is shell number two and equals to two and this is shell number three and equals to three so the first electron that we are removing this one is from here we are removing from here the second electron is also from there okay so the first when we remove the first electron okay let me go back in time a bit yeah? okay so the first electron that we remove okay this first sorry this yeah, yeah, yeah. this this first electron that we removed is from here okay so let's say we remove that electron already so now what happens is this now becomes uh, two the next electron that we remove is this one lah. okay and then we keep removing and more and more electrons the third electron is also from here this this one is from here this is also from here okay all right so so basically what are we doing so let me just do this again huh? okay so what are we doing okay, let me do this again so this was 3s2 this is 3p3 right so this this one this is the 3p3 electron this is the 3p2 electron this is the 3p1 electron this is the 3s2 electron this is the 3s1 electron okay this is the 2p6 electron so what happened is after we have removed all of the valence electrons we remove all of this we are now going into the next shell by the time we reach the next shell right you must realize we are taking 15 protons versus only 10 electrons so there are more protons compared to electrons that is why that is why the amount of energy needs shoots up really really high because we are going to a shell closer to the nucleus as well as now we suddenly have more protons okay and another thing i want to tell you here is this if we take all of these energies if we take all of these energies that you're seeing here right and we plot it into a graph okay we plot it into a graph so what i'm going to do is um let's say we take sodium for example let's say okay let's say something like this right the first energy is 495 okay so let's say this is the number of electrons removed huh? number of electrons removed number of electrons removed this is the energy so the first energy is here okay let's say the first electron is here then by the time you remove the next one the energy jumps really high okay so when when you see a big gap between these energies that means they are the one with the lower energy is in the outer shell okay like for example let's say we take aluminium right in the case of aluminium okay let's say if this was aluminium this is the first one this is 580 okay so let's say this is 580 then the next one is 1008 okay let's say 1008 15. then the next one is 2007 okay 2007 then you notice what happened is by the time we reach to the fourth electron right is 10,000 already so by the time we reach the fourth electron is 10,000 it jumps really high already so what happens is when you look for this gap there is this gap here right this is the gap when we look at this gap it basically tells you all of the electrons that came before the gap all of these electrons are the valence valence electrons okay these are the valence electrons so by looking at the ionization energy we can decide how many valence electrons there are okay so like for example like for example okay let's look at uh, chlorine so chlorine a bit difficult okay let's look at sulfur the last one here is 8400 then suddenly we jump to 27000 so there's a big gap here right it's a big gap here so which means that one two three four five six sulfur has six valence electron that's what it means okay then here there's there if you look at in the case of uh, if you look at the case of phosphorus from 6002 to 21000 there's a jump right so which means that phosphorus had one two three four five five valence electrons so that is how it enables us to figure out how many valence electrons there are 
All right. So that concludes uh, the periodic trends. All right. So I.